and welcome to the Citroen Electric Show. My name is Ailish. I'm a presenter for Electroheads, a multimedia channel on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok that brings you electric car content. And I love all things electric cars. Now, are you on the fence about going electric? Maybe you're concerned about range and charging, or perhaps you want to know how to get the most out of an electric car. Well, you're in the right place. We're here to help inform and hopefully convince you on just how great electric cars are, even if we are a little bit biased. Now, this evening, I'm joined by resident Citroen product expert, Ellie Rogers. Ellie, how are you? I'm really good, thank you, Ailish. Awesome. Now, Ellie, could you quickly run us through what we are going to be covering today? Absolutely. So this evening, we'll be covering a quick overview of electric cars and more specifically, what Citroen are doing on the electric and sustainability front, the main differences between electric and petrol or diesel cars, electric car myth busting, getting the most out of your electric car, and of course, questions from you, the viewers. Right, there is so much to get through, so I think we should probably get this started. Car makers have been talking about the movement to electric cars for years now. So what is the current state of play? It's pretty much everyone is aware by now. And something that I'm personally very excited about is that sales of all petrol and diesel cars will be banned in the UK from 2030, which is what, eight years away from now? So where are we on that journey to all electric? Well, electric car sales are booming in the UK. In 2020, new registrations were 186% higher than the year before, making up over 7% of all new cars sold. And that number will only rise. This really is a transformative era for the car industry. When we look at the entire period since the first car was released, well over 100 years ago. It's a really exciting time and what is driving this, of course, is the urgent need to reduce the impact we are having on the environment and the move to electric is a key part of that. And as you mentioned, there's an upcoming ban on petrol and diesel cars in 2030. The government are obviously looking at ways in which they can help people make that switch. If we can use the carrot and the stick analogy, the carrot has been offered in the form of incentives such as the plug-in car grant, currently £2,500, as well as discounts on installing home wall boxes. The stick part is the aforementioned ban and more local actions such as restricted access to high emitted vehicles. There's also a need to rapidly grow charging infrastructure, which there is, but we will get onto that later and why it's likely that's something you don't need to worry about. The majority of manufacturers are now offering a range of electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles and more are being released every month. The choice is really great for customers. So Ellie, can you talk us through where Citroen are on their journey? No problem, Ailish. Many, I'm sure, are not aware of the fact, but Citroen has been producing electric cars now for 28 years, starting with the AX Electric back in 1993. Citroen's latest generation of electric cars spans the entire Citroen range, from the revolutionary AMI to the largest van, Citroen Relay. It's why Citroen can honestly say it offers electric for everyone. The range will continue to grow, and by 2025, every Citroen on sale will have an electrified version, which is already the case for the entire van range today. Citroen understands that the switch to electric can be daunting, so offer a range of solutions to help ensure it doesn't have to be, including the Handry My Citroen app to monitor range, set up charging, and even preset the interior temperature. Every new model also comes with six months free subscription to the BP Pulse public charging as standard. Plus, you can rent a larger car or a van for when you need a different Citroen, say for that house move or weekend away with friends, thanks to free to move rent. Owning a Citroen electric car couldn't be easier. As we mentioned previously, the switch to electric cars is great for you, but also for the environment. Citroen knows that protecting the environment isn't just about providing zero emission transport. It's about the entire life cycle of their products and ensuring a minimum amount of impact at every stage from production to recycling. Citroen is committed to reducing its environmental impact and ensuring its use of natural resources is responsible. I'm going to throw a few facts at you, Ailish. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Bring it on. Perfect. Citroen has achieved a 93% reduction in landfill waste over the past 20 years, and has seen 96.4% of the waste produced by factories recovered, aided by close collaborations with startups to improve waste recovery. 100% of all metal is recycled, and Citroen is working fast towards zero landfill across all areas of the businesses. More specifically to electric cars, this includes looking at how we can recycle car batteries even further than the 85% already possible today. The second life of batteries for use in homes, and how we can make our factories even more energy efficient. When we look at the car's life cycle, 
each Citroen uses 30% recycled materials within the actual car. Also, once it's reached its end of life, 95% is recoverable and 85% recyclable. Impressive stuff. Now, I'm sure the viewers at home would like to hear about which Citroen Electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles are available right now, but also in the not so distant future. Absolutely. I worked with the team here at Citroen HQ to create a short video to tell them just that. Citroen's ever-growing electric and hybrid range now features seven cars and vans, with new C5X and AMI following in the coming months, bringing the total to nine. As the range grows, you'll be able to choose from an electrified version of every model by 2025, while the entire Citroen van range already offers customers the choice of fully electric. Let's start with the smallest electric Citroen, the AMI. It is the embodiment of Citroen's promise that electric should be for everyone. AMI is affordable, electric and easy to charge. It sits two people comfortably, has space for luggage, keeps out the British weather and has bags to feel good about it. Now let's take a look at the new EC4 electric. Ideal for families with a spacious interior and large boot, it showcases the latest Citroen Advanced technology and comfort, featuring the exclusive Advanced Comfort suspension. So comfortable, even Rory Reid compared it to a Rolls Royce. High praise indeed. It also features a WLTP range of 217 miles and can be charged from 0 to 80% in just 30 minutes when using a rapid charger. Moving up the range, we have the larger of the two Citroen SUVs, the C5 Aircross SUV Plug-in Hybrid. Building on the comfortable and versatile C5 Aircross, the hybrid version combines an efficient PureTech petrol engine with an electric motor to give you the best of both worlds. The majority of daily journeys are possible in 100% electric mode with its 34 mile range, but when you need to go further, just select hybrid mode and let the car work out the most efficient balance between the petrol engine and electric motor. Clever stuff. Plus charging is easy and takes just under two hours via a home wall box. You can even preset the cabin temperature before setting off. Perfect for this time of year. Lastly, the new eBelingo and eSpace Tourer. Belingo is the original leisure activity vehicle first introduced back in 1996. With this third generation model, eBelingo builds on what people know and love about Belingo: space, space, and more space, but adds in an electric motor, rapid charging, and a 174 mile WLTP range. E-Space Tourer is a no-compromise option for large families and businesses. It offers the same benefits as the standard Space Tourer, flexible seating, space for up to nine, and a host of advanced driving assistance systems, but with the added benefit of reduced running costs and a near-silent driving experience. So, not only do you benefit from the usual comfort and technology of a Citroen, but electric vehicles also have the added benefit of being more sustainable and increasingly cheaper to run, thanks to a lower pence per mile cost and lower servicing costs. They also emit zero emissions from the tailpipe, ensuring cleaner air for everyone. Electric vehicles are a win-win for both your wallet and the planet. Thanks Ellie, a great overview of the range there. So how can we help the viewers understand which type of electric car to choose? So this is something I think people need some help with. Let me explain. Did you know that there are three main types of low emission cars available to buy at the minute? Plug-in hybrid, like the Citroen C5 Aircross plug-in hybrid, this is a car with a petrol engine and a battery on board. You can drive either using electric energy only or a combination of electric and petrol for longer journeys. Battery electric car, just like AMI, EC4, eBelingo and eSpace Tourer, these cars run on electricity and are charged up just like your smartphone. Hydrogen fuel cell car, this fairly new technology uses a fuel cell to produce electricity by fusing hydrogen and oxygen. There are only two cars currently on sale and Citroen will be launching an e-dispatch van with this technology in selected countries next year. Today we're going to focus on battery electric and plug-in hybrid cars. Now I normally ask three things to help determine which type would suit our customers. Their mileage, usage and charging options, abbreviated to MUC. Ailish, I'm going to read out some characteristics and I want you to try and identify whether they'd suit a purely electric car or a plug-in hybrid. All right, let's do it. Perfect. You can play along in the chat too. So characteristic one, has a private driveway or parking space. Oh, well, surely it's got to be both, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, if you've got your private driveway or a parking space, you've got the chance to have a home wall box, so you can charge both at home quite happily. Characteristic two, their daily commute is 15 miles each way. 
Oh, I mean, like easily battery, but uh, in the whole scheme of things, both would apply. Yeah, definitely. You're right. So the hybrid's capable of 30 miles in, in fully electric mode. And as well, that's not too far to be going in a fully battery electric vehicle, too. So perfect for both. Characteristic three. At the weekends, they like to travel further afield to mountain bike tracks. OK, well, obviously, it depends on the mileage of a battery electric vehicle. But mm. let's say, for the hell of it, a plug-in hybrid. That's true. Equally as well, with a lot of the ranges now in EVs, you can also look at the fully electric as well. So you're right, that's a good way to look. <laughs> Characteristic four, they have access to a traditional ICE car as well as their low emission vehicle. OK, so we're talking about a second car here. Yeah. So, I mean, naturally, a battery electric. Yeah, that's a very good idea. Characteristic five, they live in the countryside and have to drive lots of B roads to reach the main town. OK, depending on whether or not there's sort of charging infrastructure in the town, could be battery electric, but to play it safe, plug-in hybrid? Yeah, safe option, definitely. <laughs> Characteristic six, they work from home and only once in a while go into the office and that's only five miles away. I mean, it's got to be a battery electric. Yeah, they're perfect there, aren't they? <laughs> OK, so you were pretty spot on there across all of the answers. So, yeah, a hybrid or a battery electric vehicle, depending on mileage and usage and those charging options. I mean, I have to say I have had a, a, a bit of time looking at electric cars, <laughs> so I, I maybe maybe was a, had, had a bit of an upper hand on this a one. Bit of experience on that <laughs> front, definitely. <laughs> it's really important that you look closely at driving habits. In our heads, we all do 300 miles a day and spend half our lives at the petrol pumps, but that's just not true. 300 miles is not far off an average tank of fuel and the majority of people fill up every seven to ten days. Yes, we might do the odd longer journey, but we should buy cars that fulfil our needs for 99% of the time, not the 1% that we may need to do extra miles. Plus, a rapid charge in one of our electric cars means those 300 plus mile journeys are more than possible. OK, so we were just talking there about one-off scenarios, but what if I have a couple or even all of them? Well, as if by magic, I have some case studies for you that are reflective of some Citroen customers that have visited our retailers recently. So case study one, meet Camilla. She's a GP at her local surgery in the city centre. She lives just five miles away from work, but her daily commute, including the school run, is about nine miles each way. Her house has private parking space and her partner has a large family car as they like to go on holidays to the beach, which is about 300 miles away. Her place of work is looking to install charging stations at the surgery in the very near future. OK, so using our MUC framework, what would you say Camilla should go for? A battery electric car or a plug-in hybrid? Drop your answers in the comments below too. OK, so her mileage daily is pretty low and every now and again they go to the beach, but they've got a separate car for that already. Yeah. Her usage is pretty low and sticks to city centre driving, which electric cars suit. Mm. And in terms of charging, she can install one at her house if her work installs one. She has plenty of charging options. So what do you think your suggestion would be for Camilla? Well, looking at this car behind you, the EC4, I think would be a perfect fit. There's plenty of space for the kids and you can put all your bits and bobs in there as well. Exactly. Camilla is a perfect match for an electric car. Her partner could also replace their large family car with an electric car as rapid charging makes those one-off longer journeys possible. OK, ready for case study two? Perfect. Tom is a mountain bike enthusiast and lives in a rural village just outside of a main city. Day to day, he's an accountant in the city, but come the weekends, he's off exploring the biggest hills in the countryside. He doesn't have a private drive, but working in the city centre, the staff multi-storey car park has a number of car charges. So what do you think? I think a C5 Aircross plug-in hybrid for sure. His mileage is really variable and day to day he probably does, what, 20 miles. So his electric charge will cover that. Plus he can charge at work, which is an added bonus. And then at the weekend, he needs the flexibility of being able to head off to all corners of the UK if he can. Exactly. In Tom's situation, an electric car could also work. Just a quick 20 minute stop along the way could give another 155 miles of range. There really is an electric car for everyone. And even if you think you're not compatible, you probably are, but you just don't realise you are. So we've talked a lot about helping customers understand if they're suited to an electric car, but what do you see are the main differences between electric, petrol and diesel when it comes to ownership? Well, in true Blue Peter fashion, here's something I made earlier. <laughs> Thinking about electric cars can sometimes be daunting, but the change from petrol and diesel to electric is simple. The engine is replaced with an electric motor and the petrol tank is swapped for a lithium-ion battery, just like in your smartphone, albeit much larger. The motor drives the wheels and feeds electricity via the battery. Simple, right? There are many benefits to owning an electric car. 
Firstly, electric cars, in the majority of cases, are cheaper to own thanks to a lower cost of charging versus filling with fuel and reduced servicing costs. But how much lower are we talking? Well, if we look at fuel costs versus electricity costs and compare an average journey of 30 miles, you could save up to £1,200 per year. You can also defer charging to take place during off-peak times, further saving you money. Servicing is also cheaper with fewer moving parts, no oil to change, and the added benefit of lower wear on the vehicle when using features like brake mode. More on that later. It is also free to access restricted city areas like clean air zones and congestion charges. Another great benefit and a potential saving if you drive into places like London every day. Secondly, with zero emissions at the tailpipe and no petrol or diesel used, their impact on the environment is significantly less than traditionally fuelled vehicles. You can also further reduce your impact by choosing a renewable energy tariff at home, now offered by most energy suppliers. Lastly, electric cars are just better to drive, in my opinion. There's no engine noise, no gear changes, and clever tech like braking mode makes stop-start traffic super easy. The benefits of driving an electric car add to the already comfort-focused Citroen range, taking its advanced comfort features like suspension and seats, and adding in a near-silent driving experience something we call e-comfort. Oh, well, thank you, Ellie. Some great stats and facts there that make switching to electric even harder to resist. Now, we also know that there is a lot of misinformation out there. So for those customers moving from a petrol or diesel car, which they've been used to for so many years, it can make the electric landscape feel even more daunting. So. Why don't we correct some of those myths? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, I've got them right here. So number one, electric cars are impossible to charge on the road. So loads of people think that they're going to do loads of charging while they're out on the road, but in fact, 90% of charging is done at home. Then 7% is done at a location like work or a hotel, and only 3% is done while you're out on the road. But if you ever do need to charge on the road, there are now over 42,000 chargers in over 15,000 locations, and most of these offer rapid options, so from 0 to 80% charge in around 30 minutes. That's a lot of charges, right? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of charges. OK, so second, I've found a charger, but it's raining. Can I charge my car? Yes, you can absolutely charge your car in the rain. Everything is protected, so absolutely zero risk. That's a major myth busted there. Major myth busted. OK, <laughs> number three, batteries. A lot of people saying that they need to be replaced every five years. Is this the case? That one's false. I mean, this myth about rapidly degrading batteries has been massively overblown over the years. There are many older electric cars still going strong, and total lifespans are not too dissimilar to petrol and diesel models. Plus, most come with an eight-year or 100,000-mile warranty, so you're covered for a really long time. There's even life after the electric car for batteries, as they can be repurposed for home electricity storage. All right, so lots of positive information there. What about when I'm on the road and suddenly, I should know this, but uh, we run out of battery? Well, much the same as if you ran out of petrol or diesel, you are going to come to a stop, but recovery services do have the ability to give you a very quick charge to get you to a rapid charger or another charging point along the route. So it's not too dissimilar to going for a walk for a jerry can of fuel either. Okay, so a big thing for me about switching to electric is I want to reduce my carbon emissions, but here there are murmurs that electric cars aren't actually any more green than a petrol or diesel car. Is that true? I hear this a lot, but thankfully this is not the case. Making electric cars does use more energy during production, but even after taking battery manufacture into account, electric cars are still the greener option. This is because of the reduction in emissions created over the entire car's lifespan, like zero emissions emitted from the tailpipe. And as Citroen continues to improve the production process, like an increased use of recycled materials, which is already at 30%, the environmental impact will only reduce further. OK, well, that's actually a really nice segue into sustainability as a whole. And as we all know by now, there's the incoming ban of sales of petrol and diesel cars in 2030. But what does it all actually mean? Basically, you won't be able to buy a purely petrol or diesel car anymore from 2030. It doesn't mean you can't keep driving your current car, though. But obviously, you won't be able to replace it with a petrol or diesel car after 2030. So they won't disappear entirely for quite a while to come. OK, so I don't have to get rid of my petrol diesel car just yet. That's good to know. So next, what about ultra low emission zones and clean air zones? What are they and what are they doing to support the UK's low carbon goals? 
These are defined zones within cities that have been set up to reduce air pollution and cut emissions. They work by charging certain cars a daily fee to enter, intending to deter older and more polluting vehicles. Okay, so it's not in every city or town yet, but it's definitely something to consider, right? Oh yes, absolutely. As it stands, all electric cars qualify, as well as most newer petrol and diesel cars built from 2006 and 2015 respectively. But as with London's low emission zone, you can expect them to become larger and stricter as the UK moves towards a net zero target in 2050. All right, well, let's get on to some other common myths, specifically about charging. So firstly, if I get a wall box installed at home, can other people use it and effectively I pay for their charge? In a word, no. Charging a car at home takes around eight hours depending on which wall box you've installed and the size of your car's battery. So for someone to steal your energy, they'd have to do it at a time that you wouldn't notice a random car parked in your drive, hooked up to your charger. So I hope you agree that's pretty unlikely. Pretty unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> but there are a couple of things you can do, though, if this is something that you are worried about. Many wall boxes now come with locks, so unless they have the key, it can't be used. Deferred charging is also your friend here. By setting your car to charge at specific times, someone who wanted to use your charger would have to be plugged in at those times, which, of course, is when your car's plugged in. This can be set up on the My Citroen app or via most home wall box apps. OK, that's great. So what about charging on the road? Is it a huge faff? Well, speaking from experience, it's really not a faff, but it does take a little more consideration when planning a longer journey. When you purchase either an electric or plug-in hybrid Citroen, you get six months free BP Pulse membership, which gives you access to all BP Pulse chargers throughout the UK. This is a great way to get used to and comfortable with the electric charging network. There's also lots of great apps available to make charging easy. One I use a lot is ZapMap which will show you the nearest chargers, their availability and the type, so you can make sure it's the right one for your car. As with anything, it's about getting used to a new way of doing things, and once you've charged a few times, it will become second nature. So, what is the difference between charging? You hear about rapid, fast, slow chargers, but for many watching at home, they won't really know what that means. So, we're going to focus on the newest electric cars to keep things nice and simple. Rapid, which is up to 50 kilowatts, or ultra rapid, which is 150 kilowatts and above, are often found at motorway services or locations close to main routes. They are tethered cables and just require prepayment, and then they can be plugged straight into your electric car. They are able to charge much quicker than home wall boxes, and in most cases can get you back up to 80% in just 30 minutes, just enough time to grab a coffee. Fast chargers are the type you would have put in at home. They could also feature at workplaces or your local supermarket. 7 kilowatt is the most common type and they can charge the majority of electric cars in about 6 to 8 hours. 22 kilowatt is available and will charge a car in about 2 hours, but fitment is slightly more difficult. Most are untethered so you'd need to connect your own type 2 cable. Then you've got slow chargers. These are the least common type and normally somewhere between 3 kilowatts and 6 kilowatts, taking around 12 hours to charge a car. You can also use a standard UK plug to charge, but you're looking at well over 24 hours to charge in some cases, and we wouldn't recommend using these day to day due to the higher current demands. OK, cool. And how do you charge an electric car? Do you need lots of plugs and cables? So rapid on the road chargers will have a tethered cable. So always check that it has the right cable for you. For Citroen and most electric cars, it will be a chunky CCS cable that you'll plug in. With wall boxes and most fast chargers on the road, you'll need to plug in your own cable. All electric Citroens come with a Type 2 cable as standard. It's not an extra, unlike on some electric cars. Well, that is a bonus. Right, I think it's time for some more of your questions. All right, so question number one, how much money would I save a year with an electric car versus a petrol car? So we've done an estimate between a petrol car and an electric car and looking at yearly fuel costs, you'd be looking to save around 75% over a year. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of saving on fuel costs. That is a lot. And you could probably <laughs> go on a few more holidays with that, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK, so question number two. Does an electric car battery drain faster the more weight that's in the car? Yes. So there are a few factors that affect the battery and weight is one of them. In fact, we've recorded a video to help answer this question. Keep it smooth when driving. Avoid suddenly accelerating and late braking, which is the quickest way to reduce your range. Reduce your speed. The faster you go, the more energy you'll use, which is true of all cars, but especially for an electric car, as power consumption can increase by a quarter between 50 and 70 miles per hour. 
Plan your route. Some in-car navigation systems, like Citroen Connected Navigation, handily give you the option to select the most ecological driving route instead of the fastest. This route may take slightly longer than the quickest option, but it could potentially mean you won't need to stop for that quick battery top-up along the way. Every electric car features regenerative braking, a handy feature that uses the electric motor as a generator to recoup energy back into the battery, which when used can help to extend your range. Selecting Eco Mode helps limit the power of the car to around 80%, further extending the electric range. Preconditioning the interior temperature before setting off can be a great way to take the pressure off the battery to extend your range. This feature can be activated via a smartphone app or the car's touchscreen, just like on Citroëns. It also brings the battery up to an ideal temperature, and we recommend doing this while the car is plugged in, further maximising the range. Plus, it has the added benefit of ensuring the interior is nice and toasty in the winter or colder during the summer. Ideal. Travel light. We all have that random bag in the boot or items you keep meaning to take to the tip. Well, those all affect the vehicle's range, so if they're not needed, then best to remove them. You'll be surprised the difference it'll make. Awesome, some great tips there. All right, so let's move on to the next question. It has been mentioned here before, but mm -hmm. what is government doing to help people with electric cars? So the government has a few things they're doing to help, and one being the plug-in car grant which is £2,500 off approved cars that are under £35,000 and up to £6,000 off electric vans. Every trim level of new EC4, new eBelingo and eSpace Tour of business all qualify for the grant. Awesome, so there are definitely some options there for our viewers. So finally, we've had a lot of questions about charging and batteries, but what is it actually like to drive an electric car? Well, I'm glad you've asked. We have another video here about some of the benefits of electric cars. Here are five great things about electric cars. They make very little noise when compared to a petrol or diesel car. It makes for a real serene experience inside. For safety, because electric cars are so quiet, a soft audible sound is emitted outside of the vehicle so pedestrians can hear you coming at lower speeds. All electric cars are automatic and have only one gear, so no gear changes, just a smooth and gradual delivery of power. Whether you love or hate the smell of fuel, there's also no fuel odours with electric cars. Plus, you'll never ever need to visit a petrol station again. As we've mentioned previously, electric cars emit zero emissions at the tailpipe. This is not only great for the environment, emitting no carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, but also for the air we all breathe, especially in inner city environments. Thanks for all those, they're really helpful. Now, Ellie, I want to know, if I was a business owner, is going electric right for me and my business? Oh, absolutely. So a lot of big businesses have recently moved to using electric cars, and there really are lots of benefits for businesses in general. Firstly, running costs. We spoke earlier in the VT about the total cost of ownership. Well, it's the same for businesses. It might be a bit more expensive to get the car initially, but the running costs are so much lower, which I'm sure is music to the ears of those looking to reduce their overall fleet costs. Also, in terms of tax, when you have an electric fleet, you unsurprisingly pay less tax, as the benefit in kind rate is much lower. This year, for instance, it's at 1% for an electric car, and next year it's 2%, and that's the rate until 2025. In comparison, for high emission cars, it can be over 30%. Okay, there's a lot of benefits there, but I have a sneaking feeling there's a few more. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Businesses that use electric cars are also exempt from car excise duty, van benefit charge, fuel benefit charge, and of course, fuel duty. If any of our viewers would like any further information about making the switch to electric for your business, just search free to move lease and get in touch with our teams who will be more than happy to help. Oh, it's almost as if we planned this because my <laughs> next question was going to be, who can I talk to about going electric? So there are a few options available to you at Citroen. Firstly, there's the virtual showroom, which enables you to have a one-way video call with one of our Citroen product experts. They're on hand to answer any questions you may have and can also give you a guided tour of your preferred Citroen. And how do I access that? It's easy, just head to citron.co.uk and you'll see the link on the right hand side of the page. There's also a live chat function where we have a team on hand to assist and again answer any questions you may have. 
Okay, so that's online, but what if I want to pop into my local retailer? Every one of our retailer salespeople are highly trained on the Citroen electric range and electric cars in general. So if you have a question and would like to ask in person, then they will be more than happy to help. It would also be a great opportunity to experience an electric car for yourself. Experience the comfort and quietness, and I'm confident you'll love it as much as we do. Also, I don't know if you know, but Citroen have recently introduced Sign Live into all of their retailers, giving those who are deaf and hard of hearing the ability to communicate with us both for sales and any servicing inquiries. That's really cool. Okay, so just, just a few options then. Oh yeah, just a few. And the main thing is, no one is going to push you into an electric car when you walk in. It's a big change. So if you're still in the research phase, that's fine. We are all here to help. Well, Ellie, you have answered a lot of mine and the viewers' questions, and I feel like we've covered a lot today. We absolutely have, and I hope we've helped those of you on the fence who are concerned about going electric feel more than ready to make the switch. Thank you to Ailish as well for helping me get all of this information across. Well, thank you for having me. I've had a really great day. You're more than welcome, and thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.